Good morning guys, as part of the 2021 update from Unity, we now have a new way to create meshes. To give you a broad overview, we now have a simple way of doing things and also an advanced way. It's also how it is stated in the documentation. The methods we use in the simple way is what you've seen also in the chess game. So when we made our little tiles for the chess, we use set vertex, set triangle, set indices, and set UVs. Uh, those are the simple way of doing things. But now you can also use the advanced way. The advanced function are all down here. You can have a look at those. And if you use those, you're actually going to bypass the validation to Unity. So by dropping those validation, dropping those check, we do gain some performances, but of course you gotta make sure you, you send in the right information to Unity, else you're not gonna have any error popping up. And I'm not sure if you can actually crash the game or anything like that. I haven't tried it to that extent, but thus far I've been sending in information that works well. So. I'll be going over both versions, so both the simple and also the advanced way of doing things, and I'll do that uh, right here. But before we do so, I have to note that this code was actually based off somebody else's code. Um, his name is Kejiro, and I think he's a Unity Japan staff, I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, but he has been featured on Unity Japan, so I've been looking at his code to make my code, and there's just a small difference here. So if you'd like to see the difference in between the two code, uh, you can compare them. There's going to be two links in the description, my GitLab and also his GitHub, I believe. All right, so now we're gonna give it a try. I'm currently checking out the, the simple API, so the simple mesh API. And as you can see over here, we're roughly around 60 FPS. Um, I did use the application target FPS to 60, so we're gonna be around that, just a little bit below actually. And as you can see here, we're running roughly 100,000 coins. Um, and those coins, if I am to pause, are all quads so if we are to check this out with a shade wireframe where are my coins okay well they're gone <laughs> if we're checking if we're to um, check it out with just the wireframe here as you can see all of these are quads and they disappear in scene mode but <laughs> the important part here is that they do work in the game um, so with that in mind I'm gonna just close this one off I'm gonna go back in my code just toggle on the advanced way of doing things and go back. Let's give this a try with the advanced one. And prior, we we're getting 100,000 coins. Right now, we are going above that, as you can see, and almost doubling it, actually. So, yeah, we're almost doubling things just by removing the validation check. So, those are the benchmarking between the two. Um, same FPS, so we're going actually even a little bit higher sometimes but we do spike uh, from time to time but here I'm roughly at around 60 fps and i have roughly twice the amount so as you can see big gains over here and it's the same thing as before right so those are all quads okay so i'm going to shut this down have a look at the mesh builder simple and advanced those are a uh, script static class actually that will help you build a single mesh and do note that this project is actually running on both burst and also the job system so here it is, it's the Burst compiler and this one contains the job system. Actually, I'm thinking that they're they're the same package right now. So, all right, let's give this a look um, inside of the script. So as mentioned earlier, when we make a mesh, right? So when we make a mesh through the simple way, we also done that for the chess tutorial when we made our highlighted tiles. All we have to do is do the following. So we create a vertex array. Uh, we didn't do UVs for the other thing because we use a single material, but in case you want UVs, in this case here, we did use UV because we wanted to put a texture um, with, with an actual albedo texture on it, not just a color. So we use UVs, we also define the triangle list. Um, and here, just at the top here, this is just so I can reuse all the same values. So those are a static field and I'm just reusing them. So I'm not creating a new list every time, I'm just allocating them once. And then every time I want to fill it up, you do a clear. So right before we create a new mesh, we clear that up. We of course change things around. Uh, same thing for UVs. UVs are always the same here because you wanna have the four corner of the plane. And finally, the triangle. For a triangle, here is something that I actually never done before, but it ends up working quite good. Um, it's actually to set your triangle array through a for loop. Then set vertices, set UVs, and set indices. So that's the regular way of doing things. That's also the way we did it for the chess tutorial. Now let's have a look at the advanced way of doing things, which is a little bit more complex because now we have to start jobs. We first start by allocating some values. Here is the amount of quads we're gonna be spawning. Coins is the equivalent of quads. So um, 
Uh, that's the list of all the coins I have to create. The vertex count is going to be that times four because I only have four corner, cor four vertex per coin actually. And then we clear up the mesh. Then we allocate uh, the arrays. So we have native array and that's for the vertex and that's for the indices. So that's the triangle array and that's the vertex array. We um, create them in temporary jobs and then we actually create jobs for them. So we have a vertex construction job and a index construction job. Maybe I should have changed that for triangle construction job. Um, so it's just like earlier, right? So earlier we had vertex into UVs and then into triangles. So this one, see it as triangle. We then run the handles for these jobs. So we schedule these job. Once they're completed, we keep on going by doing the following function, set vertex buffer params and set vertex buffer data. You can have um, a look at that code directly on my GitLab or on Kijiro's GitHub. All the links are in the description down below. And if you're curious, a coin quad is actually defined just like this. So we just define the four vertices and where they should be. Okay, now let's have a look at the sponsoring, the thing that actually starts everything. We first have a couple of things here regarding material and also the size of all those diamond. Actually, I made that with diamond. Those are coins. Um, yeah, I forgot to change those names. Uh, in Kenjiro example, those were bullets. So just want to put that in perspective here. Um, in the start function, I first start by assigning the target frame rate. That's what I'm aiming for. It doesn't mean that's what you're always going to get, but that's what you're aiming for. We then assign, um, we, we then create new arrays that we keep in memory. Those are defined right here. And we create a new shared mesh. So all of that is actually stuck behind a single mesh and that mesh is dynamic. Now to explain this a little bit further, we can have a look at the job system here. So this is actually being done whether it's the simple way of doing things or the advanced way of doing things. We have a update job that takes care of moving the coins around. We have a cleanup job which takes care of removing the coins when they're off the screen. And we also have a spawn job that takes care of spawning them, right? So those are all defined in a different script. And that script contains all the job. It's actually called the coin update job if you wish. Um, a lot of things are in a weird comment here because I wanted to put it in different different format because Kejiro actually use a format that I, I'm not used to seeing, like this one here. And it's uh, it's quite cool. I might use that in the future. But at the moment, I had to replace some of the code so I could just understand it a little bit better. Um, for the update job, we basically look at next frame. Next frame is a function defined within the coin and it just moves it. So position plus velocity. In the cleanup job, we look, are we outside of bound? If we are, then we are not going to be adding this thing to our list. And finally, in the spawn job, we have a look at um, if we have any places that are unfilled in our array. So we have a list of coins. And if we remove all the ones that are active, we have a certain amount. And that amount is then being spawned with the coin.spawn, which is another function defined under the read-only structure for coin. So I do invite you to have a look at this code, maybe change the way you're doing things here when you're spawning mesh, depending on how many you want, of course, if you want to have just a small amount, then doing it the old way is not a problem, especially because you have to integrate the job system if it's something that hasn't been done for your project. But if you're looking to have something that is uh, extremely efficient, if you were trying to benchmark or if, if you're trying to create a game that has like so many objects, yeah, uh, you get me, <laughs> okay. So I hope you guys learned something. I might actually be using this in the future if I decide to create some, something that requires a lot of models. Do know that this can also be used in, in 3D, not just in 2D. I know that we've made 2D, we made a coin quad, right? But you can actually transform that vertex array into something that is 3D as well. Maybe like a cube or something where you need a little bit more definition as well. And I'll leave you on that note as I am going to play with my dog. Hope you guys have fun. Let me know in the comment section down below where you're going to be using this, if you are going to be using this. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye.